Hi, everybody. My name is Harm Sherbier, and I will be moderating the dis this discussion today. But we're going to wait for another minute for people to join. So hang in there, and we'll wait for other people to join. I see lots of attendees still arriving, so we'll start in about a minute or two. Welcome everybody. We'll wait for another minute because new attendees are still joining us. We'll start in a minute. And thank you all for joining. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Harm Sherbier. I'm today's moderator, and this is a HSX University presentation. And the topic today is Caroline in HSX Market Street, which is a, an example and a demonstration of how clinical apps can be powered and connected through clinical APIs. That will be the topic of today. I am um, the panelists, the presenters today are Dr. Suba Aranjavia who is the founder and CEO of Caroline and also an associate professor at Penn Medicine. She'll be followed by Dr. Sri Adusamali, who is the assistant chief medical information officer for connected health strategy and applications at Penn Medicine. Then we'll hear from Alice Vong, who is the manager of IT engineering at HealthShare Exchange. And I am Harm Sherbier, I'll be your moderator and the chief medical information officer at HealthShare Exchange. Before we start, one simple request, if you have questions, please type them into your chat box and I will take questions. We will take questions after all presenters have covered their topics. We'll do, we'll do a panel conversation and we'll be including your questions. So please, if you have a question throughout any one of the presenters, please feel free to type it into the, into the uh, chat box and I'll be able to see them from there. And with that, I would like to start handing the screen over. So. Brief background for just a second before I hand over to Suba. So the topic is Caroline. Caroline is a, is a company that Suba will discuss with an application that rides on top of clinical clinical data sets. Could be electronic health records. In our case, it's a health information exchange. Suba will explain how that tool works. And the, the, the connectivity from HealthShare Exchange is called HSX Market Street. That is the area of HSX where partners can connect into the HSX data and that's the section that both Suba and also Alice will be covering. So that's the theme, the outline of today's presentation. I'd like to start by asking Suba to give us an overview of um, Caroline. Suba, how about I hand it over to you? Great, thank you. Let me just share my screen. All right, Perfect. you seeing Got my it. screen? Wonderful. Yes. Okay, so thanks for doing this webinar. Um, uh, for letting me be a part of this webinar. I'm very excited to be here and share um, what we developed together at Penn and now have launched into Caroline and really the power that is possible um, once we connect with, now that we're connected to Market Street. So I'm very excited about the possibilities of what we can do. Um, really what Caroline was designed to fix or the problem was designed to fix was team collaboration and communication errors. And we do that through providing critical data for clinicians on the go at the point of care, but also by bringing teams together into what we like to call the virtual bedside huddle. So the fact is that the delivery of patient care has really changed over the last several decades. We no longer have one person who knows everything about a patient. We now have dozens of different teams of patients 
multiple different clinicians and specialists to take care of patients, not just over a matter of days and weeks, but also even hours. And then of course, within facil or between facilities, the quality of care that we are able to provide has certainly improved, but it has also created additional challenges. All of these teams are extremely busy. They work on asynchronous schedules. So being on the same page at the same time about what's happening is really challenging. EHRs, of course, have made great leaps in the last couple decades, but when it comes to this core issue of keeping teams, multiple different teams together uh, on the same page about what needs to happen, they have not done well with. And also with powering these teams with data that they need on the go um, ha has been lacking. And that was the problem that we uh, set out to fix. This is an example of a real patient who um, I think you know ex exemplifies why this is a challenge. So this is a patient uh, that was admitted in the hospital with pneumonia. The intern came in on day four and said, oh, I think that this patient's ready to go home based on what we've talked about. And she has this history of a GI bleed, um, but that wasn't visible to the team because that was you know, it, either in care everywhere or in other areas in the HMP. And on this day four, when the intern came in, that wasn't readily in their mind or available. But the intern said, okay, I think she's ready to go home. The attending came in a couple hours later and said, you know, I think she doesn't look as good as I wish or as I would have hoped that she would look on the day of discharge. Um, she kind of remembered that she had a history of GI bleed. So she said, let's check a hemoglobin before she goes home. But she wrote that on her pocket, put it on her list, put it in her pocket. Uh, sorry, she wrote that on her paper list and put it in her pocket, which is the standard from Epic or any other EHR is these paper rounding lists that we carry around all day to manage our work. And that message was trapped in her pocket because as she walked out of the room, she got called into an emergency. So that message never made it to the intern, never made it to the nurse, never made it to the social worker, all of whom were acting on this discharge order that went into the EHR. And so sure enough, the patient went home. They did in fact end up suffering a GI bleed and ended up getting readmitted to the hospital. And of course, that's now an unplanned readmission that's not covered. For the health system, but more importantly, not the quality of care that any of us would want to provide to our patients, and certainly not what the patient would expect um, when they come to the health to the hospital. And that is precisely what Caroline was designed to fix. I think that unfortunately, sometimes fixing communication failure feels like an insurmountable task. It feels impossible, and so I think it almost feels like status quo. But the reality is that every patient like this one is somebody's loved one, and none of us would want to expect, accept that status quo for our family. So really, that's what we're what we have poured decades of work into fixing is helping our teams communicate better. So it takes a lot of different things, of course, to help teams work together. And we built this over uh, well six, seven years at Penn, and and Caroline does many different things. I'm going to just focus on two of the main things that Caroline does to really help with this issue, and particularly things that the EHR doesn't do very well. The first is team and task management. Caroline has shared electronic task lists for not just the primary team, but consulting teams, all other clinicians, um, interdisciplinary groups for nurses, therapists, pharmacists, to be able to work together on what needs to happen for a patient, and the ability to easily make standardized templates and checklists so that you can really make sure that you're implementing standardized care across your uh, services. So in this example that I just talked about, instead of writing it on her paper and putting it in her pocket, the attendant could have easily written or dictated directly into Caroline, you know, we want to check a hemoglobin before the patient goes home. And importantly, this wouldn't have been seen by just one intern or one person on a text message. It would have been seen by everybody caring for the patient. So it would have saved the attending time, but also would have made sure that everyone was on the same page. And you know, people often ask, doesn't that take more time than writing it on paper? Actually, what we have found is that it is so fast to do this in Caroline that people actually do this over 300,000 times a week because they find that not only is it fast, but it saves them time from having to track down everyone else on the team to say, hey, this is what needs to happen and what I've written on my paper. The second big thing is we really power informed decision-making at the point of care. And we do that by integrating with EHR and other data sets, as Harm mentioned, like Market Street, where we can bring data in and actually show vitals, labs, meds in real time and in a clinical way, clinically oriented way, the way we wanna see it to really drive decision-making. So again, in this situation, 
the team would have actually seen that although the patient's hemoglobin was normal in isolation, it actually had been trending down, not just at their institution, but at other institutions. And they would have actually been alerted to the fact that, hey, this is a problem. So instead of taking about 30 to 40 clicks and 10 minutes per patient in the EHR to get this data, it actually takes two taps and seconds within Caroline, and people can do it on their way to the patient room. So really while they're um, you know, making decisions and talking to the team about the patient. We are extremely excited to be partnering with um, Market Street for many reasons, but two big ones are that number one, you know, EHR integrations are important and valuable and great, and clearly we've done that, um, but they can take time, even though we work with um, both app galleries for Cerner and Epic. Uh, and with Market Street, we're able to leverage the information that members are already sending to the health share exchange and bring that into Caroline so it's available for clinicians at the point of care without having to take any additional steps. So, you know, really leveraging the work that you've already done into sending data to uh, HSX. And then the second is that we're gathering all of this information, not just within our one institution for our patient, but across the region. So, you know, if our patient had a GI bleed at another hospital, we'd actually be able to see that information in real time at the bedside while we're taking care of patients so that we can make informed, more informed decisions. So I'm not gonna go through an exhaustive walkthrough. I'll just show some quick screens to give you an idea of what and how Caroline works and particularly how HSX data um, can pipe into Caroline. Um, but of course, happy to talk more about that either in the Q&A or, or afterwards. But um, you know, at a basic very first um, layer, HSX data will bring patient lists and demographic data into Caroline. So when you um, are managing your patients and your lists in Caroline, even without any EHR integration, because of Market Street, we can actually query the database, find uh, patient information, and bring in things like the patient, the emergency contact information, their allergies, uh, all the important information that we'd have to otherwise manually enter in, and you know, I just I didn't show it here, but data provenance is, of course, of utmost importance. And the way we are bringing all of this into our user interface shows for every single data item, you know, when, did, where, what was the source of that data? What was the date of the record so that clinicians have all the information they need to interpret it appropriately? Care team information will also come in, both the primary care team, other um, providers, and the ability the ability to call and access. Uh, those those providers that we can increase communication as a team and then as I mentioned the vitals and the labs and the medications diagnoses are a huge part of that informed decision making which we can also power now with the CCDAs and the other data that's being sent to care to HSX so really you know this is of course dependent on what information is being sent by each facility but whatever is being sent to HSX we can pipe it in and leverage the interface that we've already created um, for full EHR integration. Uh, for the application itself, just a quick overview of essentially what we have is the ability to do patient summaries and um, shared tasks, as I mentioned. I'll just point out and say that this is not meant to be, and it's not duplicative with what we do in the EHR. It's actually replacing what we're otherwise doing on paper. So all of these tasks and these FYIs are things that people are writing into a free text box or onto paper lists. And then um, you can actually use that to generate progress notes, particularly for sites that are on paper progress notes or EHRs without um, full uh, uh, documentation capabilities in their EHRs. That being said, you can also use it perfectly well with Epic, with many, which many services at Penn do. Um, but Crozier, for example, uh, is using Caroline. And last year, in the midst of COVID, you know, pre-COVID, they were doing all paper progress notes for physicians, and using Caroline, they've actually been able to switch now to completely electronic progress note documentation. So it really um, adds a lot of flexibility to um, clinical teams workflows. I'll just do the rest of this really quickly so I don't take up too much time, but I just wanted to mention that sometimes people ask, can you actually get people to use this, you know, a new application? I think our philosophy is to design for delight and really you know, that's been the goal here when you have clinicians signing for clinicians is it, it improves people's workflow. On average, clinicians tell us that they save an hour a day using Caroline. My favorite quote by far was an attending who said that we'd have to pry it from his cold dead hands if we tried to take it away from him. And of course, everyone loves saving time, but at the end of the day, it comes down to the care that we provide. 
and 75% of users can each point to a specific time when Caroline prevented an error in their own practice. So they feel safer providing care with Caroline. That, of course, then is seen by the patients. So we've seen an improvement in our HCAP scores and patient satisfaction surveys. And then all of that, of course, drives then the bottom line. And we talked about how Caroline can reduce readmissions. Um, but with the progress note, uh, docu the documentation module that I mentioned, um, we've actually seen an increase in the case mix index because documentation is more complete because less information is being lost on paper. That's my high-level summary, and I look forward to, to talking more and answering questions afterwards. Thank you, Suba. That was a great overview. Very fast. I think what, what we have seen you present is, Caroline, not as a replacement of the EHR, but as a supplement to the EHR, and not only a supplement to individual users, but clearly also a supplement that helps teams communicate with each other. And I think that's often where EHRs are somewhat individualistic, and I've, you've shown how it ties teamwork together. To learn more about that, let me reintroduce Dr. Shri Adusamali, who is the Associate Chief Medical Information Officer for Connected Health and Strategy and Applications at Penn. And Shri is going to tell us a little bit how Caroline works on the work floor with the clinicians in real life. Shri, thank you for your discussion here. Um, thanks so much, Harm, and uh, uh, Super. that was a fantastic uh, introduction and I think overview of Caroline. So really thrilled to be with you all today. Um, uh, I, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how we've been using Caroline um, uh, uh, at Penn Medicine in context. And uh, a little bit of context about myself. I'm a general cardiologist here at Penn. I trained at Penn uh, with Suba, actually, uh, when Caroline was under development. And uh, so have seen um, Caroline grow and be implemented through various phases as a trainee initially, and now as an attending on the other side of the care team, supervising trainees. And, and so they, they, I think for, for all members of the care team, as Suba was pointing out, uh, that, that there, are, there are a lot of applications here. So. Uh, next slide, please. So originally, and th this was really seminal work, I think, that, that Suba led while she was at Penn Medicine. Um, one of the pr fundamental primary problems uh, that uh, that was outlined, including by our Chief Medical Information Officer, Dr. Bill Hansen, um, that, 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 that we had a problem with handoffs uh, being primarily stored and uh, uh, task items being primarily stored on paper. Uh, as as Suba was was illustrating earlier, and uh, and the problem with this is that as soon as uh, that paper is just not good enough, and that as soon as a piece of information is printed on a piece of paper, it's outdated, right? It's outdated. It can be lost. It can be left uh, for others to discover in a non-confidential fashion. And uh, and we found through work done at Penn that the average list uh, was in that was in the hands of clinicians was nine to twelve hours old. That that means that the information that was in folks' hands that they might be acting on to deliver care was out of date uh, almost by the entire clinical day. And this was you know uh, at three p.m. at a cross-sectional evaluation at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania, and. Um, and printed documents were out of date between both day shifts and night shifts. This is actually not uh, this that quote is not uh, is not from Penn specifically, but in general. So this illustrates this isn't just a Penn problem, but more of a uh, 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 overarching national international problem. And as I mentioned earlier, paper itself is not HIPAA compliant. So we have confidentiality issues with paper that can be left behind at the coffee shop, for example. Furthermore, uh, I think uh, many of us have an interest in healthcare quality and safety. Uh, the, 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 the handoffs are a particularly vulnerable time of care and being covered by a cross covering resident is a powerful risk factor for preventable adverse events as illustrated by this study, which is a little bit older, but I think still holds that, uh, that the risk uh, or the odds of, uh, of having a preventable adverse event when a patient was being uh, cross-covered by another physician is exponentially higher. So what's an approach to the problem that, that we could take and that we thought about taking and that we did take uh, at Penn Medicine? Uh, so number one, we decided to uh, develop a solution, which ultimately became Caroline, which was uh, to take what was traditionally stored on a piece of paper and uh, translate that to a desktop and mobile handoff and task list. That, uh, that this tool, in addition to containing the handoff and task list, would have access to data that was updated 
in real time from the EHR to eliminate the, the necessity for rounding based on a piece of paper, and that this tool would be interdisciplinary and, and accessible to all within all care teams and disciplines. So teams could see uh, what was going on with a particular patient, use the tool to communicate, and have access to the same framework of data all at the same time within the same tool. Uh, next slide, please. And so Caroline, I think, was, a, was, was is, is the product of our aims uh, to do what I had mentioned. And one of the fundamental concepts uh, or principles of how Caroline was de designed uh, in our organization was to think about how do we integrate the handoff and task list tool into, clini into clinical workflow, into clinician workflow. This was of paramount importance. And, and uh, a big component of that was ensuring it was integrated into the EHR itself, because the EHR is now at the core of everything really we do. Uh, and so um, Caroline, uh, as illustrated here, can launch from an EHR integrated module, basically a button within the EHR that you can launch uh, from, uh, uh, from effectively any view, and it feels like it's part of the EHR because it's effectively just a window or a pane within the broader record. And so you can see there the, the Caroline button on the on the left hand side launches the, the app or module uh, into a pane on the right hand side. And so once you're within the application, and this functions the same way whether you're viewing this on mobile or on desktop or within the EHR or outside of the EHR, there are several views. And one of the key views are the ones depicted here, or several of them, including the ability to look at a patient's vital signs and trend vital signs easily and intuitively. Look at labs. I know many of us who are clinicians are very fond of this particular layout, fishbone layout of labs, and uh, very intuitive to us and a great way to display lots of information uh, in, in something that we can recognize immediately. And so this is, this is very popular, even to the extent that to this day, uh, folks uh, uh, take screenshots of, of the way Caroline displays data and place, place them into notes as part of documentation. So that's, it's a very intuitive way, I think, of looking at labs and then medications in the same way um, that you can go into Caroline and see medications, uh, the medications a patient is currently on, previously on, and then also when doses were administered or missed, again, just with a couple of taps. And, and for us, that's, that's been incredibly helpful uh, uh, to all members of the care team. On top of the data visualization, and, and really this is, the again, one of the core functions of, uh, of Caroline is that there's a simple handoff and task list. And the handoff is guided by having a one-liner, a summary about a patient to orient any member of the clinical care team, uh, as well as a task list that is tagged with various items including whether an item is an FYI, for example, or an item that needs to be addressed prior to discharge. And there are various other features, such as being able to color code tasks. And, uh, and teams really use these. Uh, they use them in a variety of ways, but uh, these, these tasks in a variety of ways. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but in whichever way they're used, the tasks are stored, cataloged, and can be referenced you know, either that day or when they're completed uh, to go back and as a record of what has happened. And so you can see here, this is another view of that where you're able to see the handoff itself as well as the tasks by, uh, and you can orient tasks to both day, night, uh, and at various times during the patient's care journey in, in, in the hospital. And so where do people use this? Uh, and really this, uh, uh, Caroline is used throughout Penn Medicine uh, in the inpatient setting through all of our hospitals uh, or many of our hospitals, I should say. Uh, and also used in a variety of care settings from the intensive care unit to the general medical and surgical wards. So who uses it? And I think uh, Suba had brought up this, uh, this question a, a little bit earlier about, uh, about having clinicians ad adopt uh, Caroline, but it, it's really been adopted by, as we say here, 159 of our inpatient services, but effectively uh, all, uh, um, uh, essentially all of our, of our primary uh, medical and surgical services uh, in various ways are using Caroline and it's, on, it's in use on all uh, inpatient units as well as post-acute acute care units. And you can see here, these graphs depict, again, who specifically is using it. And so you can see on the left-hand side that trainees uh, predominantly are using it, APPs, nurses, and attendings such as myself are also using both to keep handoffs as well as to see what is in the handoff itself uh, that, that trainees and other members are putting in. And, uh, and you can see on the right-hand side, another depiction of, of users. 
so when we compared Caroline to the historical legacy EHR handoff tool that was in place uh, for several several years, and these data are from 2016, actually, you can see that that in a statistically and, and clinically significant fashion, um, clinicians who used Caroline uh, felt that they were able to efficiently manage patient care abilities that uh, that they're satisfied, uh, more satisfied with the handoff system in Caroline and that they would be more likely to recommend the handoff system within Caroline versus our legacy EHR handoff tool. And furthermore, they felt that, that when handoffs were maintained in Caroline, they felt that that system was safe for patients as opposed to the legacy tool. And you can see they used it during all parts of, uh, of, of uh, clinical care, including during transitions, writing notes, during rounds, pre-rounding. And we've tried as time has gone on to make Caroline accessible and easy to use during all, during all phases of uh, uh, where a clinician may need to or want to see patient data and handoffs. And so to summarize, uh, hopefully you've, uh, we, I've been able to show you that Caroline really has become a cornerstone of workflow for all members of the care team um, throughout, uh, throughout our organization. Uh, and thank you for your time. Happy to take questions a little thank bit you. later. Yeah, we'll do questions at the end. Thank you so much, Sri. And, and I think, you know, again, a beautiful discussion. And thank you for illustrating how clinicians at Penn use Caroline. I, I just would recap that as saying you've shown both how it's connected to the data side, right? How you connect through APIs into the EHR data and also into HSX data, and how it's also connected to the user side, how it's blended in with their user interface. So to a user, Visit connected both on the back end data side, but also at the front end UI side, that creates that smooth um, connectivity. Thank you, Sri, for illustrating that. Next, I would like to reintroduce Alice Wong, the manager for IT engineering at HSX. She will talk a little bit more about the um, what I would say is the plumbing behind the scenes in HSX and how Market Street feeds data into applications such as Caroline. Is my screen showing up? Yeah. All right, Alice. Yes. Thank you, Harm. Um, thank you for the lovely introduction. Uh, and really, I will try to keep my section pretty short and sweet. Um, but again, I'm the manager of IT and engineering here at HealthShare Exchange. My team um, is responsible primarily for all the behind the scenes work for the HIE and then also the development work for the super cool platform of Market Street that we're talking today. Um, so the exchange of healthcare information has traditionally been um, really uh, transaction-based. When a patient comes and goes from a facility, a lab test that gets resulted, or when an encounter is closed, you get that ADT, you get that lab result, and then you get that CCD. Um, the Market Street platform itself is a two-sided platform that enables apps and partners secure access to the health information that HSX has captured throughout the number of years um, through the HIE. Um, and also just to say too, with the, the way that we do healthcare exchange today, it's been very clunky. Um, so we hope that Market Street provides uh, an avenue for real-time precise data to help the clinicians for care and treatment of the patients. Um, in my next slide, I'll kind of show you how it all works. Um, you know, instead of doing the song and dance of creating different point-to-point -point connections with different sources of information, members such as Caroline can make one connection to HSX. Then they will have data from all of the different membership members that we have um, connections to for encounters, um, problems, meds, all that clinical information that we've collected through the years. Um, partners can do um, either two things. They can pull all this data that they would like to see. They can also push data as well to, um, to members or to record this data so that it's made available throughout the membership. Um, the FHIR APIs that we have listed in the middle, um, that provides the different resources that we have available so then folks can actually pinpoint exactly what clinical information that they need to see today or in this moment. So instead of you know, requesting for a very long CCD for a patient and then scrolling down to the results section, trying to find your A1C or trying to find your um, INR result for the patient, you could instead um, make a result request for the patient, 
And then through that request, um, folks are able to put in parameters to search for specific tests, such like an INR. Um, if there's a one code, that's even better for, since it's a coded set. Um, and then folks can also put in a date range too. So instead of seeing all the INRs that a patient could have had in their lifetime, you know, you can actually pinpoint to just seeing 12 months, 16 months worth of data. Um, one of the things that we have seen is that data is great, but sometimes the amount of data can be very overwhelming to see for a patient. So being able to provide that real-time um, information and especially to focus on what clinicians need to see in that moment has been very beneficial for folks. Um, the other use case that we do support um, as well, I know that the arrows kind of point one way, but we do support the use case for uh, patient home monitoring tools. So um, in a case where you know, a patient has issued a device to record or monitor blood pressure results, that result can be recorded um, and then it can be pushed to an app, which then can be pushed over to a provider or to an EMR platform. So all of this information that we have in the Marcus Street platform um, is available to folks securely. Um, it's all the information that we're collecting throughout the, the area, not just in the southeastern Pennsylvania, but also through our connection to New Jersey and then also um, in the upper counties of Pennsylvania as well. Um, and then the information that we provide is very uh, made in a way that it's easily manageable, easily programmable because we're using um, technology that's been used throughout the years. So any software developer can kind of pick up what we have and kind of play with it. Um, and a lot of the, the information that we have today is very beneficial for, for folks, um, especially for the, the care and the treatment of patients. Um, we do have, for folks who are more interested in Market Street itself, we do have a website called hsxmarketstreet.com. I encourage folks who are interested to learn the different APIs, the different endpoints that we have, uh, the different resources for that clinical information that we have available today to kind of go on that website. Um, and you can request access to our sandbox environment. The sandbox environment is um, all fake data, fake patients, fake everything. So um, folks can have some fun, they can play around and make different requests to access the test data that we have available. Um, all of this to say is that Market Street is um, our way to provide a more viable platform for folks um, to make connections through payers, through providers, through different EMR vendors, so that that information for the patient that they're caring for um, is all available in one spot um, and made easily available as well. And I think that's all I had today, actually. So I'll turn it back to Harm. It's great, Alice. Thank you so much. I um, you said one thing I want to point out because it's so important, and I want to emphasize what you said. So, in a very common today, data exchange takes place through CCDs. We exchange CCDs, continuity of care documents, with each other. They go from from hospital to hospital. They go from hospital to HSX. We send HSX documents back to all through CCDs, and the the while that's okay, the big downside is that these are big. And that if I'm looking for something specific, I will receive a whole CCD. That is how Care Reviewer works. And then I have to go through it and find it. What Alice so just said is that Fire APIs, as you'll still see in this picture, allow us to be far more discreet and specific about what data the user wants to see. And, and therefore, I think we think that that is the future of interoperability. It it won't be passing that very big CCDs from person to a person. It will be far more directed. And I think this Firebase integration with Caroline is an example of that. The other way that that is illustrated is through the 21st Century Cures Act, which we talked about at an HSX University session um, a few months ago. It's still recorded. If you want to see it, it's still on our website. That clearly lays the foundation for an API-based interoperability, which makes it much more precise to what the application is looking for and not the entire CCD, but a very specific piece of data. That I think is, is some real, really relevant piece of information that Alice just showed in that um, picture. So thank you for Alice to, for pointing that out. 
I want to take some questions. Anybody in the audience, if you have a question, please type it into your um, chat box. There was a question here, which I would like to ask to the group. Hold on, I need to find, find. I can't read that question anymore. Um, I was gonna, if you don't mind Harm, while you're doing that, I might just say one quick please. thing, um, which is that, you know, I think as we mentioned, EHRs have obviously made a lot more data accessible, um, but sometimes harder to find. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm looking at the matrix where <laughs> there's all this information and I'm trying to really make it, you know, usable and understandable. Um, and what you just described is a, a perfect example of that, which is that you can have pages and pages and pages of, a, of CCDA documents. But if I can't answer the question, the clinical question that I have at the moment that I'm trying to make a decision about something for a patient, then it becomes a hindrance. So, you know, I think this feature of interoperability, as you mentioned, it is taking it to the next stage and saying, OK, we've now brought the data together. Now we need to make it more usable, make it actionable and make it even more accessible. Good. Um, the question. Uh, we have several several questions. Here's a question for for uh, maybe first Suba and then maybe Alice. Um, the question is: Is the HIE connection, in this case the HSX connection, going to give the clinicians access to more patient level data like labs, meds, than they would normally get in Epic within their own organization through Care Everywhere? So so by linking so to, an H, to an HIE, how do you go beyond Care Everywhere to a bigger bigger space? What, what's your thought, Suba? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, my understanding is that Care Everywhere is bringing us data usually from other Epic sites. Now, in in our area, there's obviously a lot of Epic sites. Um, but what the HIE connection gives us is in the non-Epic sites, which is definitely an important subset of that. Um, also, a ton of post-acute care sites. So, I know a lot of members of HSX are nursing homes skill nursing facilities, home care companies, and there is a lot of information about our patients that is relevant to how we practice that happens in these non-acute care settings. So bringing all of that information and making it accessible for us at the point of care is, is I think, what is really different. Um, so I, I tend to think of what we get from um, the HIE as not necessarily like really deep information in one encounter, but a broad um, set of information across all of the different encounters. And it's so essential to have that holistic view of patient history so that we can make better decisions. That's right. Alice, do you have a... No, I mean, I echo everything. Um, yeah, I, I, it's it's the same response. Um, I, I do agree because my understanding too is that Epic Careware is really just focused on the Epic data from different customers. Um, the other thing that you know is beneficial is that we not just only have connections with the the bigger health systems in uh, Pennsylvania and Philadelphia, but we also have connections um, with LabCorp. So we do receive that test data for the patients, regardless where that care is being taken place or who, regardless of who actually ordered that lab test. Um, so that information is more richer. Um, and again, it's uh, receiving that information for that patient as they kind of travel, um, if they're you know in Philadelphia, if they're crossing the bridge to New Jersey, we have that data and those connections. So it's more broadly available um, and uh, not limited to just one specific EMR or just one data source. Yeah, good, thank you. Um, I have another question for us as a panel. Um, and I think this to me is the fundamental question of where we are in EHR space today. And there is this um, belief or philosophy. I want to ask Shri the question first. So there's this belief or philosophy that, that or unwritten rule, or whatever you should call it, that, that in an organization, everything needs to be in the EHR. The EHR is our single platform that all users are on and, and, and we don't want to step out of that. And you're not supposed to step out of the EHR within current CMIO, you know, rules rules of the road and and that's different with caroline so so do you see by moving to more interoperability do you see that rule becoming a, a little bit more obsolete and do you do you see that it will now be um 
effective and usable for not having everything inside the same platform, but allowing um, uh, supplemental applications to be added on to the EHR. What's your thought about that, Sri? Where, do, where are we going? Uh, no, I think that's a great question, uh, Harm. Um, and I think that, uh, so I, I think that the EHR is, a, is the foundation, right, for, for all, of, all of this work. It's the home of the core pieces of information that are needed to take care of a patient within their current episode of care and longitudinally. So as, as that home, it's the source of truth. Uh, it's the single source of truth uh, for a particular patient within an organization with regards to their data healthcare. Um, so tools like Caroline and 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 others, and I think this is where we're going, is that we, um, I think Supa was hinting at this earlier, that the EHR now has so much information um, at times that it's hard to parse to find what you're looking for uh, that you need to take a particular action. And so I think that um, the opportunity that we have for tools like Caroline or others is not necessarily to take information and segregate it from the EHR or store in an area that's separate from the EHR. I think, I think uh, you know, uh, that, that the EHR should still be the, the, the source of truth, but that, that we have an opportunity to display this information in a different way to make it more, use, more usable um, for, for clinicians and then potentially to add context. Uh, that's useful uh, for clinicians to that uh, to that information. So, um, so, so I do think that that the two that 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 uh, that interoperability is not sort of opposed to the concept that the that everything should be stored in the EHR because I do think we need a source of truth, but we need better ways to to parse that information. Good. Um, right. Yeah. Go ahead, Subha. Yes, please. Lots of lots of ideas and thoughts here, but um, I know I agree with what you're saying, Shri, and, and I think for sure the EHR is a foundation, and it's the legal record, and it should be the source of truth. And you know, some basic tenets, for example, with how we built Caroline, is that when we're bringing data in from the EHR, it's view only, right? We're not changing that information, we're not altering it, we're presenting it, and like you said, making it easier to pick out what you need. Um, I think. What I've started to do is think about, you know, how is interoperability helping us outside of just one health system? And I've only ever practiced medicine at Penn, so I have a very Penn-centric way of looking at things when it comes to practicing. But I've realized recently that, you know, our patients don't just go to Penn. They go everywhere. And this is even more of the case in, in other areas where their data is across many different EMRs. And I think that's where interoperability and this question that you're asking, Harm, really comes in is, is you have to be able to have a way to connect things across these different foundations, right? We have like, I, I almost think of it as all these different house foundations, but you have highways that connect them and you need to have that to be able to bring that information together. Um, otherwise they're staying siloed. Um, I will offer one other thing, which is that a lot of information, which we don't, we don't normally talk about it and realize it, but there is a lot of information that never makes it into the EHR because it lives on paper. And as you said, Shri, that was one of the big, um, that was really the big thing that we worked on or that we embarked um, on to fix with Caroline was there's all of this collaboration and tasks and information that there actually isn't a place to do in the EHR. And if you're using the Epic handoff tool or the Cerner handoff tool, or as we were doing the Allscripts handoff tool that we built, um, it was, you know, it's free text. It's basically like a, you know, a table in a Word document. Um, which made it not very useful. So I think it's a, um, you know, obviously my my view is that having platforms that really sit alongside and with the EHR to more closely mirror what we do with workflow are okay. The goal is to get that information back into the EHR. And so the information that you do want as part of the legal record, it should be very easy to bring that back in. Um, and, you know, there there might be some information that perhaps doesn't need to be there, but I think that's still a gray area and ripe with discussion. Um, but, you know, as long as we make it easy to capture the information that we need while we're working and then bring that into the EHR, that is the goal. Thank you. I think um, that's a good perspective. And I think it also shows us how after many, many years of 
having organizations live on one EHR and really focusing on the single platform, I think we might see that evolve and come to a bit more um, diverse ecosystem of information system tools. And, and, and I agree with you, Suba, there's still paper. So that is the first thing we should try to go after as an opportunity for um, to eliminate. Um, Alice? Since we are both at HSX, we don't live in EHR world, we live in health information exchange world. Do you see um, a opportunity or trend moving away from the single modular EHRs to a more interconnected space through market street? I mean, yeah, I, I do. Um, and you know, my previous life, I worked at one of the founding HSX members as a application analyst. So I live Pro, in sure. the EMR space. Yes, worked at Crozier for 10 years as the, the GE centricity analyst over there. Um, so I'm very much aware of living in the EMR, EHR world. Um, I think the, that again, that there does need to be that place where, um, you know, there is that master source of truth of that patient care. But I also do think that there are ways to push and pull that data. Um, and Marcus Street does allow for that easily um, um, method of doing so. Um, and I do believe that a lot of the um, regulations that are coming out are more patient focused for patients to be more empowered of their own data, um, to kind of control their data, access their data, um, provide more information um, about it. So this is really a new area that um, I believe that healthcare itself is going to be entering and then also figuring out ways to kind of you know, manage it in a way. Um, but I believe, I do believe that Market Street will play a big place in this. Good. I have another question that is a little bit tangential to the main topic of the day, but I would like to ask your thoughts on this and see what you think. So the question is, where can blockchain add value both in EHR and HIE? And, and you know, I know what blockchain is. I've, I've never really quite been able to articulate it. I wonder what you guys think. Um, Suba, do you have a thought about blockchain? In oh, you're EHR calling on me first. I, I'm probably the least. This is probably one of the things I've the least. It's okay because it's a little bit of a side topic, so it's it's okay for us to say that's really not you know up our alley today. Yeah, so it's not up my alley. I am well. I should say I'm very interested in what it can do, and you know, not knowing as much about probably the rest of you on the call. Um, I, I do think of it as a way in big concepts a way to facilitate disseminating information about patients more broadly across, you know, all the different places where they provide care. Mm -hmm. um, the the data provenance part of it, I know blockchain, like really, you can easily see what came from where, but one of the things that I think is challenging about patient information is that it's dynamic, right? Like we find errors, we need to fix them, things change, diagnoses change, we update our we update our allergies. I mean, I, how many times have I changed a patient's allergy to say no, they're not allergic to penicillin, they just have you know a reaction to it. So it's okay to still give them a penicillin containing medication. And so that's where I don't know answers around blockchain is how do you take information like that and change it? Um, but I think that's also a question even in the EHR in general. Yeah. Alice or Shree, thoughts about blockchain? I'll give you my personal perspective on blockchain and it's very uninformed, but it's, I think blockchain clearly is heavily used in cryptocurrency. Outside of that, I haven't seen big uses yet. I think outside of that, including in healthcare, we've, we've seen um, attempts, but I haven't seen a very successful and very um, necessary application of blockchain technology today, but that's something to keep an eye on. I want to move on to a different question. Also important for our space here. So is Caroline, being used in the inpatient behavioral health space at all? And, and does mental health and substance abuse, in this case, how does it stay protected? Good question. Thank you, Lauren. Um, yeah, what do you no, think, that's a great uh, question. Suba? Mm -hmm. Well, I, yes, I can tell you it's in use by the psychiatry and behavioral health teams at Penn. Um, I actually don't know if Crozier has a separate psych team. Um, but uh, the way that we protect the data really is more at the, um, you know, within the institution level right now, uh, where, you know, you can only access the information from within an institution and then teams can see their data, for example, for behavioral health. We're actually launching um, a, a version of Caroline that can be accessed directly by outpatient providers and post-acute care providers and are building into that specifically controls so that a behavioral health 
um, or psychiatry team can protect just their list so that only their team can see it. Um, I think, you know, as with all things related to patient privacy and healthcare, is there's this push and pull between keeping everything segregated versus being able to share data about the patient. Um, so acknowledging that behavioral health has its own set of rules uh, about privacy, we're, um, you know, uh, building to those rules, but I hope that we're able to, you know, share more information as, as things go forward between those teams. But mm -hmm. hopefully I answered your question. Yes, it's being used and yes, we protect the data. Sri, add a thought about behavioral health. Um, no, I, I agree with uh, with everything that Supa said with regards to uh, to Caroline's use and uh, and and data protections. There. Alice, from an HSX Market Street perspective, do we treat behavioral health data similarly, differently, especially from other data? Are there special um, protections in place? Yes. Um, so one of the the things that we do as we onboard um, different sources of information is making sure that they do adhere to those different regulations in terms of that protected data for behavioral health. Um, so in cases of um, that strict information that's coming from the psych unit or different uh, departments on the floors, that information um, from an HIE perspective, we actually um, ask for the members to block that information from being sent down to the HIE. Um, we do receive information in terms of um, HIV AIDS, but we do have additional uh, layers of protection on that data so that if folks are requesting access to that information, they do have to um, essentially break the glass um, to attest why they're accessing access that information. If it's the patient's there, gives consent. Um, if they're treating that patient right there and then, um, they have to attest to why they're accessing it. And then that's recorded um, in our audit logs. Um, and then we present that data to, to folks. And maybe add on the high trust certification status that accounts for all of HSX. That might be worth mentioning, Alice. Yep. Uh, we go through a very, very rigorous, painful um, process of attesting to how secure our information is down to the infrastructure that we have with the servers, making sure that everything's encrypted. Um, when things are in transit as well, um, we make sure that we go through this rigorous exercise to prove to um, this larger body that all of our information is HIPAA compliant, um, secure, and the folks who are accessing this information are the ones that need to access the information. Yeah. Um, we also go through vigorous um, penetration tests as well. So folks intentionally, we try to have folks intentionally uh, access our data and that information is indeed blocked as well. So we go through many different layers of exercises and um, levels of security um, to making sure that the patient information that we do receive is, is protected. Good. Thank you. Um, there's one more question just popping up. Let me briefly look at that. And then I'm about to wrap up. <laughs> that was a thank you. Thank you so much, Lauren. Uh, let, let's, um, I um, want to thank the panelists. Before I do, let me just recap, because I think it's important what this was about. This was not just a demo of Carolina or a demo of HSX. This was a demonstration of how applications, other applications, outside applications can supplement and complement the major EHR components. I think that is the main takeaway from what we're seeing today. We plan to have many other examples of supplemental and complemental applications that are able to help users in, in uh, working in a clinical team. So I think that 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 is what I find exciting about Caroline as an example of um, additional tools. And then, in addition, connecting them through HSX, which gives access to a much larger set of data than purely from the inside organization EHR. So I think those are two great examples of connecting health, which is what Sri is all about, connected health. I, um, I hope that you were able to see that in this demonstration. I hope also that after today, you'll see other examples of how this is going to work, because I think that is the future of a much more diversified and, and um, interesting um, health IT environment. I want to thank Suba for your presentation. Shri, thank you for your discussion of, of Penn. Alice, thank you for the discussion of HSX back, um, back technology. 
Um, I, we will have future sessions of HSX University, and you will see that through your emails. I would welcome any questions and feedback later. And um, with that, thank you all very much, and have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ray.